Uh, next, we have Alan Matsumoto from the University of Virginia uh, on how to become an excellent teaching physician. Alan? Good afternoon. Thank you, Dan and Zeev. I have nothing disclosed uh, other than a few disclaimers. I do not consider myself to be uh, particularly uh, teaching to be one of my great strengths. I've learned much over the years in terms of teaching. I could have done a better job of teaching earlier in my career, but I also believe that I understand the factors that allow one to become an excellent teacher. So I'm going to change the title, Things I've Learned About Being an Excellent Teacher, uh, Teaching Physician. Now, there's a concept of good teacher versus a good student. At, at all places in our life, we're either a student or a teacher. And even as a chair, I consider myself a student to other people. So we have to learn how to be a good student oftentimes before we become, uh, can become a good teacher. A teacher is a mentor. You've heard that term used very uh, often already. Most successful people can point to a mentor or an individual who influenced their career growth or success. It could even have been a fourth grade teacher. Oftentimes it's a parent. Oftentimes it's someone that's affected your life decisions. The mentor really serves as a role model, someone after whom you would like to pattern your professional and or personal life. In Japanese, the term we use is described as a sensei. That is sort of a respected individual that you value their opinion. In Homer's book, The Odyssey, Mentor was a trusted friend of Odysseus. When the latter was about to set forth for the Trojan War, he entrusted Mentor with the care of his house and the education of his beloved son. From this epic poem came the Greek use of the word mentor, or someone who is both a counselor and a teacher who instructs, admonishes, and assists a junior colleague in attaining success. So teacher, mentor, coach, whatever term you want to use. John Wooden was a great coach. He said a coach is someone who can give correction without causing resentment. <clears throat> Again, we come to this concept of good mentor versus a good mentee. I think in order to understand how to become a good mentor, first you should start by learning how to be a good mentee. So how to be a good mentee? Well, first of all, you have to be self-aware. Understand how you learn best and what your career goals and your needs and wants. Because without you understanding that about yourself, it's very difficult for you to even learn. Respect your mentor, the environment in which you work, and those around you. Be responsible, be reliable, prepared, professional, and hardworking. And you will see a lot of these themes are true of a mentor as well. Once entrusted with a task, ensure that you deliver and deliver it well. Be self-aware, again, know your limitations, your strengths and passions. Those may want to be a great researcher, can't be a great researcher, just because that's not ingrained in you. That's not what gets your passion. Be very receptive to constructive criticism. Personalize it, but don't take it personally, because it can destroy you and distract you. Be innovative and flexible. Sometimes you have to adjust your learning to who's providing the information to you and create opportunities for your mentor to help you. Be self-aware again. There's a common theme. Know that you must take responsibility for your own career. Ultimately, as Scott says, just do it. Observe, assimilate, and integrate. Some of the most learning I've done is scrubbing on the back of the table, just assisting my colleagues and watching them work. If you just observe and you assimilate the information, and you're able to integrate it, you can learn quite a bit just from watching. Understand that life, uh, learning will be lifelong learning, and ultimately the mentee will define what his or her success will look like. There's an old Chinese proverb that we should all take uh, heed to, is learning is a treasure that accompanies its owner everywhere. So let's talk about a good mentor now. A mentor is someone who advises and counsels in a neutral fashion. Mentor is genuinely interested in the mentee and feels rewarded with the success of the mentee. And the mentee is committed to the further growth and career of the mentee. Now again, as a resident, you can mentor medical students. As a fellow, you can mentor, mentor residents. And as an attending, you can mentor each other. How to be a good mentor? Again, here's that theme. Be very self-aware. I think that's one of the themes about emotional intelligence you will hear about people that they are very self-aware of each other if they're very emotionally intelligent. Know your strengths, limitations, and passions. Try not to be defensive when you are questioned or don't know an answer from a mentee. 
See it as a learning opportunity for both you and your mentee. How you will teach should depend upon the mentee or the audience that you have before you. Understand that there's multiple different media that you can communicate thoughts and uh, new, new ideas. There's lectures. There's people enjoy listening. Some learn most from experience. Go off and just do that. Take care of that patient. Do the history and physical. Some learn by seeing on a simulator, touching. Some learn from emotional support. They know what they need to do. They just need someone to listen to them and help them uh, sort out in their own mind what might be best for them. And then there's literature and reading. So there's multiple different media that you can utilize as a mentor to communicate your information to your mentee. I sort of use it as the Lester acronym. Your, in terms of lecturing, I think many of us need to be aware when we provide our lecture is that our passion to know every detail about what we're very interested in does not necessarily equal the mentee's desire to know everything. Therefore, what you want to do is pass on the pearls to your mentee. Do not try to show the mentee what you actually know. Rather, try to define what the mentee needs to know on this subject and share that information. That is a bit of an art, but I think that's what all of us can work on. A good mentor really respects the mentee, clearly defines the expectation of the student, teaches and serves as a role model, communicates well, provides constructive not destructive, constructive feedback, and makes himself or herself available and accessible. Melvin Maxwell once said, it's difficult to remain neutral or indifferent in the presence of a positive or passionate thinker. Think about that. Most of the people that you enjoy being around are positive. They're not always whining about the work they need to do or some idiot referring doc. They're talking about every situation as being an opportunity. Those are the people who usually motivate you. So if they're going to motivate you, try to emulate that positive thinking personality. What's a bad mentor? Some people like to call a tormentor. The tormentor fails to recognize their responsibility as a mentor. Whether we realize or not, when we enter into academics, and even in the private sector as a senior partner, you are a mentor by definition. They're often not self-aware, or they're aware, but they're unwilling to change and adjust. They're often professionally insecure, so they create unclear and inconsistent expectations and provide inappropriate assignment of blame and sometimes inappropriate assignment of credit. They don't recognize certain boundaries so that they make inappropriate comments, inappropriate uh, touching, inappropriate uh, uh, communication of ideas. And they dismiss the input from the mentee. Many of our best thoughts come from those that are junior to us that ask that so-called, this is a stupid question, but it turns out to be a brilliant idea. So in terms of your teaching and mentoring, embrace your role as a mentor. We're all mentors in this room to some extent, at a different level. Be emotionally mature and intelligent. Define your expectations of your, to your student consistently. Tailor the medium of your information sharing, remembering the acronym, based upon the mentee's career goals and particular needs and the environment in which you're sharing the information. Challenge and be challenged by your mentee. This is a good thing. This is where you both learn. That's why many of us went into academics. We enjoy that environment. Take gratification and pride in your mentee's success and growth. Remember, many of us that are trying to make a difference, to make a contribution, that difference is not going to have any substantive uh, meaning if we don't have progeny to carry on what we want to do and what we're trying to accomplish. These are several references. There's a mentoring handbook from the American Heart Association that's very helpful. And then there's this article in Academic Medicine about the nature and causes of disrespectful behavior by physicians. And I found this article to be very helpful. It taught me a lot about myself and how other people may see my interactions with those individuals. Thank you very much.